Can't handle the heat. Booyaka Welcome back to another episode. It's your boy G Swizz. This is Joe. I didn't say the name. If you can't handle the heat, I uh, just want to give a first. want to give a shout out to Dr. Price Electrolytes. 20% off. Out of some 20, 20% off. <laughs> Dr. Price Electrolytes. Link in the bio here. Um, today, uh, well, first of all, Mike is not with us. He's visiting family right now, so he's not going to be in this episode. But it's not just going to be the two dolos. We'll make sure we have Mike. We'll, Milan on, jeez, I'm screwed up here. We'll make sure we have Milan on here and uh, one of the, down later. the biggest character, one of the biggest characters in volleyball, in the sport of volleyball. That's true, hands down. That's it's true. Crazy. Everybody we talk to across the world knows him, and has the most ridiculous stories about him. That is true. So hopefully we'll share some of those with us. Um, should we talk about the post about Long Beach or no? Should we give an explanation or not really? You go for it. All right. So as you can see on our Instagram, we took a we took a shot at noisy buckets. Um, Basically, what happened was we were like, oh, we should start like a little beef kind of, but then, I mean, because we're friends with Dustin and everything like that, but then I was in the wrong, I was definitely in the wrong for including the athletes. I shouldn't have done that. Um, so that kind of took a, a little spin there. So I apologize for including the athletes there. Um, but yeah, that kind of happened. It is what it is. So if you guys are curious what happened there, uh, it, it wasn't anything uh, like personal. But again, I should not include the athletes. That, that was on me. That was on me. That was over the top. Because because I because we both lost. We know how that feels. And if someone posts that, would be pissed too. So I get it. That's on me. My bad. Um, but yeah. And then what else is there? Hmm. We travel next week. Oh yeah, we're traveling next week. Well, our first clinic is in uh, uh, California. We're in UC Irvine on Friday. And then we'll also be meeting up with Lexi's son this this weekend to shoot a video. Um, and then we'll be traveling. The tour officially starts in South Carolina. We'll have Jenna Gabriel coaching with us in, in North Carolina. That we shoot down in South Carolina for the Soda City Classic. And uh, we still haven't practiced any grass. <laughs> we should probably get out there and do that. Uh, and then get, get in our grass shape. But without further ado, Milan Zarkovich. Okay. We're now joined here by the champion, longtime friend and coach for Hawaii men's volleyball, and recent back-to-back national champion, Milan Zarkovich. Milan, thank you so much for hopping on the podcast. Oh, uh, thank you to inviting me. <laughs> finally, <laughs> <laughs> this has been a long time in the making. Milan, you've been at, you've been you've been yelling at us to get you on the podcast for about a year now. So I'm glad we finally got you on. But how's it how's it getting back and? Do you feel any different, or is it kind of the same, the same old with uh, Hawaii and everything? Since you're a back-to-back champion now. I mean, there is a back-to-back, to back, to back. You know, because I was champion uh, in every country where I was, uh, where I was participating, and uh, and including uh, uh, beating you and the Rado in short court with uh, Joe Worsby. So you know, we are learn, we learn to be a champion, and. Uh, that is the truth, and that is the yeah, that is the truth. So let's go now to speak another truth. Uh, how I feel, uh, I can say that uh, people here really uh, enjoy that success, and uh, we were saying not because uh, not for the people, because of the people, but it is and for the people and because of the people. But first, I can say, uh, uh, speaking about uh, philosophy, this is a philosophy that. Uh, that is implemented they, exactly. You have to represent yourself, and I think that this, these guys they represent themselves they, from uh, parts of the world that they are coming or America they are coming, and then they represent the culture that uh, that they are coming, and then the culture that we build here and the culture of Hawaii, and you know. And I think that that is the we go step by step, and uh, that they succeed in that, uh, and th- that was the recipe to. To, to become uh, to become back to back champion because uh, we had some players that they participate uh, last uh, time we, when you were participating in the winning championship you know and I think that was uh, I think that was more surprisingly that we won championship with you Gage than we we won <laughs> <laughs> no Gage. Uh, uh, I have to mention here because uh, when we are talking about championship, uh, mentioning short court and championships, I can say that uh, 
this championship uh, and uh, these all results that we have, they are not results just uh, uh, that uh, this group did. And, uh, you know, Joe was the big West champion, but, and, you know, before that we didn't have, uh, we have some success in ranking and, you know, but we can say that this success become uh, or starting begin in the 2012, 2013, actually from the time that volleyball was organized, but yeah, in the volleyball, uh, men's volleyball of Hawaii, but we can say then that it was some period where they were just participating, not uh, uh, competing for the highest position. So yeah, the this, um, I, I think this, uh, uh, Climbing up, uh, started climbing up, starting from the that years, and uh, with those group with uh, Taylor Avery, Davis Holt, and Siki, and then Capono, and then you know those are the the players, and then after Capono, Capono generation, then Joe generation. I don't want now to to mention everybody, but I, everybody is here in my heart, and they know that uh, I really uh, I really count everyone uh, cubes that uh, were implementing mosaic that we did here very very successful when we are talking about mosaics this is the one and that uh, i started doing where on on the championship day and the championship uh, trip and i can say that yeah we had a lot of these small cubes that we put to be successful so we we really enjoy that with all people around and were you were you expecting at the beginning of the year to, to like was it like oh because obviously a lot of the seniors graduated and were you kind of expecting at the beginning of the year like obviously as a coach you always expect to win the national championship and always expect to win uh, yeah it, yeah but. that is definitely but uh, 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 you know uh, Rado will definitely listen to that and you know he was he was asking me in the before the season the same question and I said to him uh, I don't believe that and I said also to uh, Joshua Walker on the beginning of season that, uh, yeah, this season will be uh, kind of different, but uh, it can bring us the title also and not on the same way. And every title has its own way. And this is the way how we how we did it. And it was not so easy. You know, we, we were dominated uh, starting with the uh, generations uh, with uh, that year with uh, Joe and Rado was that uh, sophomore. And I can say we dominated that years. And the, the, the year that we took championship, we were really good. Okay, in the final can happen everything, but it happens what we what we were doing. It will be very, very clear. And this championship, it is a little more, you know, I can say that uh, it was a little struggling uh, and the struggle was real, you know, with the COVID, with, the, with the, some sickness that we had. And going to the Munsi in that wonderful town, uh, we we lost both games we, without all players that we play. But then we gave them the 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 I can the wings and the, those wings use uh, that Munsi that uh, ball state a respectable ball ball state. They had a huge nice season and uh, very successful. And then when we play semi final with uh, them. You know, uh, we were with one. You remember, Gage, when you played a platform and the one leg is front, and you know, and when you put the line and then you cross the line and down is the canyon. And against the ball state, we were with one leg above the canyon, and another foot was on the skin of banana. And so <laughs> we were ready to go back. But okay, the usually the when you are courage and when you invest, you know, the, the, that is returning and that was returned to us, I can say. And then in the final, yeah, we show some other, we show some other quality. One of my favorite things about you, Milan, is especially after we lose or we have a bad, or even if we have a bad game and play it, like the things you say, like, for example, like the, the thing you always pointed out was like the funny, the funniness of it, for example, like, oh, we didn't have, we didn't even have time to go over there. And before we knew it, they just <laughs> bent us over yes. and we were just done, <laughs> like after the match. Or oh, how can you sit yeah. today? Yeah. Like, how yeah. can you sit today with <laughs> that ass beating? <laughs> yes, that's true, Gage. I know that uh, 
after those short courts and you know the, you and Rado you were standing the weeks you know and I remember also the another part of this uh, broadcasting the the Hawaiian Mike Ma and Capone they were also you know uh, they were also suffering from the some storm and thunder anapa that uh, took them uh, in Anaheim but uh, <laughs> but th th there is a, I think there is a one thing that uh, you have to live in the moment. You have to uh, appreciate the moment and then you have to understand what kind of moment you are. Because if you are in the moment when you, uh, if you understand the moment, example, when you lose and uh, you, you analyze that moment or you, you take that moment seriously and then you, you see how the winners are feeling happy and then how you feel sad. Actually, first of all, you have to mention or you have to de de uh, develop in players that from the childhood you too and a bunch of the kids they have uh that develop in them and then you have to even if it is developed you have to remind them okay do you remember how we felt and hey, well, you remember now gage you mentioned that or or joy say yeah you cannot sit down because they beat you ugly so yes that is how you remember you remember that and then you enjoy doubling the wins and then you fi you fight better for to winning you are not just leaving uh, you know oh whatever happens no it's not the same it is uh, you want to have you you want to have the joy of winning and uh, another one thing you do not want to have uh, that uh, and the joy of losing and since that we are talking now about uh, do not or not or uh, do i will proceed this since that uh, that you are coaches, both of you, and you will be the coaches, you will be in volleyball. I want to uh, speak here about some things that we hear a lot of times. That, uh, example, I hear uh, here in America, uh, and you are saying, uh, do not use word do not. So, so, and that is really understandable because you start with it, do not use do not. Uh, in the process of learning, it's not necessary that uh, you should be the volleyball player that you can show to the players what they have to do. And uh, that history, uh, history is showing that a uh, lot of uh, people, coaches, are become coaches even without poor or with poor ex volleyball playing experience. And then, you know, when in process of uh, learning, then you can... You, you, you know, they're a little handicapped with the, uh, with the showing by themselves. What is a little handicapped because it could be or not. Then you have a demonstrator who can show what you want to show. But the specificness of the showing, it is good to have. And uh, that's why I think that you will be great coaches because you can always show what you want, especially in your young age, in my age now, uh, I also can show, but I cannot every time bend down and touch the floor, you know, when you're playing it. So, so, or, or, you know, or it will be hurtful for me. So from that standpoint, when you show to the player and then you see that he's doing wrong, then you can say, okay, you do like this, but then you can show him and tell him, do not do like this. Because why? We are talking about uh, volleyball and especially now on your age, uh, when you were came to university, you're still in not serious practicing until that point. I mean, I can say that you are not practicing every day, except if you are not a part of the, of the serious Phoenix, Phoenix club. Do you know who is Phoenix club? No. Pacific Rim. That is Pacific Rim. Phoenix is Pacific Rim. So right. when you're not part of the clubs in uh, California, when they pr practice, or you know, clubs, I don't want to know, that is your club. And of course, I can advertise, but <coughs> the clubs that they're practicing every day. No, you're coming here, and in some part of the season, you're practicing every day, you're going to school. It's, it's uh, really little different. So, and you're clever guys. I was practicing in Europe, a lot of things, clever guys, but not educated. Do we understand that? And you met them in your teams that you play there. They are good, clever, yes, but uh, missing part of the school. And that is part of education that is, you know. And so for you as a clever, if I tell you, do not do this, 
that is the same comparing with the feeling that I, I tell you, remember how you feel when you lose. This is the same, do not do this, do this. So this is twice information for you how to do when you say, when you show and you say, do not do. Uh, in the small kids, of course, you have to have demonstrate to what they have to do. And then in the uh, stages that they're coming that we can say what to do. Well, I spent, obviously I spent a lot of time in Eastern Europe this year. So I was wondering like, and like the teaching and the coaching and the styles completely different from America. What, what are some things that you had to learn or kind of adjust to like coaching in America? And so maybe, maybe stuff that you didn't like and stuff that you did like about, or did, did you have to change it all? But I remember, uh, look, Gage, if you, if you compare what you were doing there in Bulgaria and you compare, so look, the style that we are, that we are uh, implementing here in Hawaii, it is even not uh, too much close to European style. The most close to European style is that part when we are competing and you are throwing, you know, because, uh, because I will tell you, America is the, in one point uh, really inspiring the Europe. And from the time that, uh, you know, that, and, and these washing drills and this, that was exactly built in America. And then we started following that. But, uh, you know, in Europe, we don't have 300 million people. Yeah. And uh, I mean, in every country. So you, you really have to up, uh, approach to the, uh, and, uh, and make that uh, closer to the, your mentality. That's what your player can do. Because if you start playing, just playing and what, what is most, uh, uh, what is most common in America, then, uh, you know, that, that is something that is something that I can say that uh, you will not be successful. So even here, what we are doing, you remember that the, that first part of the practice, it was that introducing part uh, and then uh, the main part of practice. In, uh, it was almost mixed, uh, mixed together. And uh, in this introducing part, we have a lot of times competing full competing in the, the without counting points and then uh, and then th th that is the way how you become after the uh, how you become better player of course <coughs> with both handling because both handling is not to, to play on the short court uh, or the small court on the out trigger baby court you know they have just to 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 no it's not uh, you, you know that in that first part of the ball exchange that there are clearly tasks that you have to fulfill. And when you fulfill them, then you have uh, pre conditions to become aggressive in every element that you are playing. What is the difference? The difference is that when we, when I came, you know, and I came in November, we went just two, three days. We went after to the California, we came back. It was uh, assistant coach and me and, and uh, Charlie stayed there for recruiting and uh, yeah. And so, we had practice, uh, practicing uh, receiving, and uh, Charlie uh, asked me to to do that because he was uh, away. Sorry. And then we tried to movement and this, you know, and then in one way, okay, that's enough. And then the, another one, assistant coach, uh, my friend, great friend Jeff Cole, because he was a little uncomfortable of that. He put the cons and let's beat the service in these cons. <laughs> You know, so that was some. I realized that uh, uh, coaching in America is uh, coaching volleyball and coaching college. You know, coaching volleyball, it is, you coach volleyball, it is uh, <clears throat> really the most important knowing the volleyball. But coaching in college, it also requests that you know other field, uh, how to uh, make players better. And then your job is more easy because. Uh, because uh, you have to uh, give them uh, or give to you when you are here the highlights of the future life and how to how to react and of course uh, other obligations that uh, that uh, you have in America. I mean, okay, it is not only that in America you have to talk to the uh, that you have to talk to to the media. It is everywhere in the world you have to talk to media, but. Uh, but there are some specificness uh, connected with the administration. When I was 
head coach of the Belarusian national team and in, in that club. You know, I thought that I will never more have more papers to fulfill. And then I came in Hawaii and uh, you know in America and I saw the, all that administrative work that, uh, that has to be done. But thanks God, uh, uh, Joshua Walker came and uh, he was really good in the grabbing whatever he he want to learn and uh, and you know and that is the thing that he was doing mostly and uh, i was dealing with recruiting and volleyball and uh, and uh, the things that i do the best what it, what's the biggest difference for um athletes that you worked with from serbia belarus and uh in america like in terms of the youth athletes what do you see the biggest differences uh, the, the biggest, uh, the, the, there is no actually a lot of difference because there is one reason when I, when I came, uh, Siki was asking me and he's saying that you will like America, you will like here in America, the, the guys, are, they will listen to you, you like the discipline. So uh, the differences are, uh, the, 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 uh, about volleyball, there are no lot of differences, but about the circumstances that they build the players, that, that is the, what, what is building your motoric stereotype. What is building coaches, not only players, Joe, because you know the, the circumstances that I was practicing and in Serbia in the in the two uh, thousands and two thousand five, two thousand ten, twelve. You know, in that point and in the club that I was coaching, we didn't have so a lot of money to 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 practice wherever we want or have our own court. So we have to adjust, and that is what make those players that they practice with. The, with the partisan Belgrade that they have to, in short time, to do maximum efficiency. In America, it's a little more luxury, you know? And uh, and the, 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 uh, the volleyball for the American boys are just a way to go overseas, for most of them, a way for, uh, to go overseas and play and have some experience, whatever is the, whatever is the awards for that and that award is comparing with the salary that these guys can take here in america it's a minor but okay i understand that is the experience that every one of you wants to try and then when we are talking about other countries every country has its own you know uh, uh, and i can say that most uh, volleyball here volleyball in america is giving opportunity for the players to to have some solutions and uh, in most countries uh, volleyball is the only solution. Yes, that's the biggest difference I think when you see in Europe, the uh, just the mentality of the players. It's like they because they don't have school usually, they don't do university, they don't do a lot of other things, and so the volleyball for them is everything they know. And so even if it's like you know learning how to do taxes, all that stuff, it's very new for a lot of athletes yes. over <laughs> in Europe. And so you you see that yes. difference. Uh, yes, I agree, and I can say that uh, that year that when Philip went and Verado went to play with national team, and I said to him, "Look, you are going there to meet bunch of the guys that they they are just going, you know, in the night school, uh, you know." On, I, I mean, that that time, you know, we never knew that on the line will be in fashion, you know, that you can finish university online, but in in, uh, in the my uh, world online was something that you are doing just fast and finish, you know. And so I said to Philip and to Rade and, and saying to, <coughs> you are going there and you will have guys around you that uh, they never hear about who you are and who you want to be. They just, uh, you know, <laughs> or whatever, or, or any writer and, you know. So, yeah, on, or any book, you know, that is the thing. Milan, well, I, I want to kind of talk about it really quick. First of all, who's your short court par partner this year? Um, I, I did. A, to, to be honest, I stopped playing. What? I have much. Yeah, I stopped playing, and I gave them more opportunity that they. And you know, I can say that uh, I was enjoying that uh, we have more more their player. I mean, one who is the uh, this. Uh, tradition and uh, will will translate always it and, tra and and take to the next level is Brett Stewart and he has a bunch of these guys new guys that they want to play and they are doing uh, you know and be before every practice uh, obviously because I am not participating they are not restricted to 
with the balls and whatever, you know, so they can play freely in the, until the practice starting. So, uh, uh, yeah, I uh, I play one day. It was uh, uh, Miyazawa, and I was surprised because he's the third, fourth libero, and then he was really good, but I practiced him in out trigger, but not short court. And then with the small... Uh, uh, Troy, a Leo engineer, really good. And I was joking and I say, oh, there is uh, two engineers here that play. Nobody can beat us. <laughs> and actually, Chad Gisman uh, recorded one one few set sentences uh, from the game when uh, Troy blocked Alakai. Alakai, is, uh, Alakai would be one that uh, I would choose to play against Shuxi because with Shuxi and me, we are, uh, uh, we are a little strong. Except if Joe don't play with the, with the, what was the name of the boy? H H. Keynes from Princeton, Joe. From Princeton. Keynes. Oh, no. Jay Kane. Yes. He's good. When He's... You, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the. So I can say that, uh, yeah, Joe is my partner for all the time and all the time, you know, and uh, he knows that and. And I know that Joe will never choose you. He will always choose me to play for because, because playing with me, uh, uh, I, I will take one uh, point and that will be the block. Mostly. <laughs> and then Joe is taking the, uh, everything else that needed. <laughs> so, so we are we are open here, you know, for that playing short court, we are open even with my small injury, but we are open for that. You know, I have this injury, little my Achilleo. It's a little hurt. And then I come to play with Siki tennis. And he said, that's why you cannot play tennis because you, because you play short court. And that's true. <laughs> so I want to kind of get into short. Everywhere we go, we always preach about short court. And that is thanks thanks to you and the importance of it. But where did you always, where, where did, well, first of all, in Europe, they played no jumping short court, which pisses me off. I hate that. I don't consider that real short court. And then, so where does you see like short court help? Because it helps your game so, so much. And we always preach that to people. So where do you first see that? And then like, where do you see it like taking form oh, on the court? Oh, that is the, that is the culture that uh, we have in uh, Kraljevo. Uh, Kraljevo is a well-known uh, town by uh, recruiting a lot of coaches. And the one who started uh, all coaching job there was Boško Izdušan. He was my first coach. And, and, you know, he was increasing to play short court for controlling the ball. And then, you know, uh, you are in uh, p permanent contact and uh, you are jousting there. And, uh, you know, in, in jousting, we, I think we can write, uh, we can write a book about that and uh, all these uh, 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 rules that can be implemented. And I can tell you that uh, short court without uh, jumping, it's helping for some things, but uh, with jumping, it is really helping. And we are not speaking about, you know, uh, in America, we don't play short court with jumping because uh, jumping, but before we start practice, all Americans are already beating ball 200, uh, 200 uh, speed. That they are, everybody is smashing ball. <laughs> Just few of them are just wake, waiting for the stretch. So from that standpoint, play short court. But okay, you have to warm up always. And uh, you know, short court with the jump is something special. Clear playing short court is helping you that you are familiar with the net. It's helping you that you can defend when you are on the net and somebody is tipping ball that you know that's what you have to do. And it's more harder than in the game because in the game, you realize that it's more softer in the game that ball is coming in the three meters or in the four meters. And then that <coughs> that way of approaching that you you are taking to the to the volleyball and to the back court when you are playing that is the same about when we are talking about uh, philosophy of practicing this you know uh, and uh, touching ball in front of you you know and and draw draw knows that that uh, two years ago when we were pan american games and practicing in the usa gym and in one point i was hearing that there is different styles and uh, no, there is only volleyball and there is the way where you touch the ball and uh, uh, building the angle behind your head or in front of your head or in front of you is totally different because when something passed your frontal line, then you have less control for that. And uh, you know, okay, we cannot, uh, 
we cannot uh, now here dispute that there are some players that they can do that, but Kach Kirali is the only one. And somebody else can approach him as a player. And so he can do that. He can control ball here. But we cannot teach that because that is something that nobody can teach you to play that with the build the angle or can and then wait for the 50 years to take the world championship. You know. <laughs> what it in when it comes to blocking and team blocking, individual blocking, what do you think is the most important pieces of blocking when you teach it? Uh <clears throat> it is there are there are you know there are a lot of things that uh, it is <coughs> the one thing that actually that you have to wait not to be so 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 fast in blocking so that when you are falling down that you are in the air and you 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 are landing that in that point that you will contact the ball because you cannot control in that point ball but what you are teaching the block is the most difficult to be te- uh, taught uh, to, yes and. Uh, B- uh, block need uh, n- need feeling when you jump where are your hands and and there is where your hands and what you are doing and do you have any anything to do in the air so it's connected really with the jump and then when you are in the jump and you're staying there as we had the player in the past here that they was they, they can do not secondary they can do several movements that they can wave to the people i am joking a little now but but you know, in the certain in the volleyball, modern volleyball, you don't have opportunity to to do any other movement if you didn't decide what to do. So uh, there is that side movement or the mo- that when you have to go on the, mostly on the cross because with this fast ball that you are setting and the players are playing, there are rarely players that they can really can control that ball and hit the line. If they hit ball that line, uh, that is something that it's uh, touchable in defense. And if it is not touchable in defense, then you have to move and block the line, but mostly, and you have to block, block the cross and then you have to penetrate. And then when we are teaching about the single block, then that single block should be one fight with you, with another one, uh, with another one attacker that you have to block. And then, you know, in the block, it's important, the strategy, what is your point to knowing what you are going to do if you are uh, going to block a uh, uh, player who is hitting so high and uh, uh, then if you are closing him and penetrate and your palms uh, are going down, he will hit easily over you. And then what you have to do and you know, to, to, uh, you are not uh, waiting when you will jump more because you will not jump more by the seconds you have to, that is the process plyometrics uh, that have to be done. So uh, until that, you have to open your palms and increase the area that that uh, it's uh, that you can appro- touch the ball, and then that is the that is the main point. Right. And the, the one other one thing, uh, uh, speaking with uh, Taylor Avril, because we spoke a lot of while he was at university, and I can say that that he's the one of the middle blockers uh, that uh, that uh, really used his physical abilities. To, to proceed and he was saying about uh, some uh, differences and he said to me okay what is the you are about blocking now and I said to him we like uh, attackers to hit we like libera to receive defend we like setters to send uh, blockers to block so uh, so th- there is a uh, question that we are asking or question that can be put uh, are you committing or you are reading I am blocking, so you have to block. And blocking does not mean to stop you. It means to have quality presence in the block, touch you, going there because are you committing or you are blocking? So that is also strategy. And, uh, you know, because when you are committing and then then it's still what you are blocking. So, you know, so that is the, we know that egg become before the chicken. So, you know. (laughs) <laughs> and, but, but yes, and uh, from that standpoint, uh, you know, quality touch it means blocking. So, and talking about the blocking, <coughs> we can say that when you have as a middle blocker, you know, when you have as a middle blocker, you have uh, 
one block by the set, you will be on the top of the tops of rankings. So if you are waiting all the all the time, that you do it, and then you will statistically be good. And statistics, stati statistically, you will be great because you got one block. But then you're not touching any other ball, and so your player in your defense is useful, and you will you will lose most of the time. So from that standpoint, yeah, statistics is the past uh, science that is dealing with the things that they already happened. You have to deal with the things that they are happening, and what should happen. Then you have to go to to Nostradamus and read what should happen because, you know, in the after next time out or after league, because, you know, generally everything is connected. We can just say, okay, we do, we can do this. What they will do depends on circumstance. Well, um, there was a, I remember you always tell us a story and uh, about you were the first outside hitter and you were in rotation one that what would happen is the play would go and then they'd set you and then you would catch the ball. And then you would catch the ball and return to the line because you said that, and you would tell the other team if they set me, th there's going to be a kill no matter what. So that's why you catch the ball. And I I thought you were joking about that, but I had players on my team that was familiar with, obviously from your playing time and and when you were back in in uh, in Serbia and Europe, and they said that's a true story. So did you actually did you really catch did you really catch the ball mid route or mid play? <laughs> Yeah, look, that was on one friendly game happens. I mean, it was officially game, and, and then happens, and then we start because we were all friends there, and then we start, you know, the, the to talking about that, and and then I increase this story, not for me, I increase this story for you, uh, uh, showing how that in position two, I mean, when when Alci hit position one, sorry, yes, when P two, P one. A pre, uh, receiver one is in position two, so yeah, that is uh, that was mostly joke. But uh, uh, yes, I can say that uh, I made I made up most of that story using that for your imagination and uh, and uh, and yes, and the pr players players knows that, and I was sharing that story through the whole national team. Uh, stuff and the uh, club stuff and then you are meeting the p players you know on the VNL and then they are sharing the story and then I have to mention something that uh, is I'm really proud and I and I didn't discover that that was discovered here by the by the local media giants and they said that on the VNL that was happening uh, you know the, during the COVID in Italy I had players uh, that I directly coached in the five national teams. And I will I, I will mention them now, and I will tell you, because when you say five national teams, uh, they will say, oh, that is made up story, as uh, this story about hitting from position, four, from position two, but not. It is a bunch of them in Serbia national team that uh, they were through years with me. And then I had uh, uh, some of them that they participate in American national team that uh, I was that summer with them and uh, and Taylor Averill was a long time with me uh, practicing. With. And then we had Radoslav Parafunov Puno from Bulgaria. He was in, in, in that. And then we had uh, uh, Einstein from uh, from Netherlands. He is the volleyball Einstein, uh, no volleyball Einstein, he is Stein. But, and then the fifth one, <laughs> fifth one, do you know for this or you don't know? Or you watch me? Know. No. The fifth one is Yegor Kluka. Oh. He, he is Belarusian. And his first national team uh, adventure was, he was 14 years old, uh, 14 and 15. And then I invite him in the Belarusian national team for the training camp. So, I was really proud of that when they told me that because that is one curiosity and uh, I will use that uh, in the I will use that in the in the next uh, in next broadcasting that I will have. <laughs> what it, what you, you use that as inspiration to to help other guys. That is only no, used absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I know we know you're a busy man. I have another question for you. 
from the match on Saturday, what was the biggest difference in your eyes about what you guys did uh, compared to Long Beach? What do you think the biggest difference was in the match? But uh, the difference was, uh, you know, it is the team, of course, but the team is con uh, content from the from the individuals. And then I can say that it was great performance, our team, and great performance, especially in the second set when we when we were a little back and uh, in the after in the next set, uh, they, uh, in second set, Jakub Tele, uh, he put uh, he put the throttle and he, he just uh, explode with the service, with the setting, with the hit the second ball, and other people, other boys are helping him, of course, and and then you had uh, fire up ready to go, both Greeks, you know, they were on the on the way, and then you cannot ignore. Uh, you know the boy that uh, he's just he think you think that he is not uh, uh, de dedicated, you know. But but when he get the ball, he's killing ball. That is Cole Hogland. He was uh, 13 years old when he started practicing. You remember Joe yeah. uh, in Aquaqua, and then you have Guilherme de Santos, arrogant Brazilian, that uh, <laughs> he always uh, played better in semi final. He wasn't, but then in the final he was he was on the yes he was on the good. Uh, uh, on the good level, and and uh, small Chamugitsa that he is a, is a special boy, that uh, he responded in the final. He any, any final Charles Galloway, yeah. He responded in any final, you know. And that year when when uh, we expecting Colton during the season play 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 Colton play only last game and he played good uh, and we took the championship, but uh, not because of Colton we took the championship because of all of you that they play and the Chaz respond properly and play greatly in the, that final. So from that standpoint, uh, that is the one thing that defines. And from another point, and we sure. can say that Alex, uh, just a second, I didn't uh, finish. From the, another point, when you have the player that uh, he was setter and he decided, okay, I will help by this post. So, you know, that is only possible in America and uh, that you just transform him and he was his so good player, Shuxi. That uh, he's so good player that that he can play that, and uh, you know, and he is accepting all all drivings how to play better libero and how to be better in the field. And you can see that in sometimes Shuxi, who is just uh, the, the guy that is not talking too much, that, that you hear him that he is a real leader on the court, you know, and 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 then when I see that in recognize, I'm so happy, and then. I am singing to him this Shukserara, Shukserara, or Shui, Shui, Shui. Yeah, and uh, from another stand, from, from another point, we faced the team. It's not if all this happened that whoever is on the other side we will win. No, we have to uh, recognize that. Other side is the team that has uh, great uh, players, great coaching staff, and uh, your great participation in the tournaments. Okay, but... Uh, I can say that uh, yes, we found ourselves better in position. That we had some uh, players that they are coming back and uh, with the championship, and they didn't have those. And another stand, another point is that uh, they have uh, <coughs> based their game on Alex Nikolov, and Alex Nikolov, uh, this, despite that he is the uh, best player of the America in his fresh, freshman year, so. Yeah, I think that uh, that that works. That if he's taking five, six points and nobody else another points, that uh, that is showing that volleyball is not enough to be only one person. Absolutely. And uh, that is also that is also joy and gauge. Uh, that is also one other thing that is um, uh, measure, message message for all coaches that they are working in America, including me. We should do better job. And trying to make the players that they are standing with us two years, three years, four years, because uh, after only one year, Alex Nikolov, as a freshman, is become the better than any one of those players that we coached. So it means that uh, he was good player before we came, but it means that Alan I great, they did great job what he is doing. But then all other coaches with this player that they are experienced, we have to do a better job. And then when you are pronouncing the best player of the in America, then you are expecting that 
that best player will take some championships, you know, because otherwise he's he was only the best. He is only the not. I'm not speaking about Nicola. I speak about anyone. He is only the best player for the season, and then then he's not MVP. He's just MVP of the league. MVP of the season should be announced on different way. Yes, agreed. Absolutely. What last question, Milan? What makes you the happiest as a coach? Like when you see, like what makes you the happiest? The the uh, the, the happiest is making me the the mission that they have, and I I, I will tell you. There is a one play the, the coaching the guys in my country and junior. So I was teaching them because they were not familiar with the books. I was uh, teaching them that we, because we have some Nobel award uh, prize, uh, Nobel prize award award you know that we receive. And then I said to them, bring the book, and you will maybe not read one day. You will read next day. So the player was with me on Olympi- uh, on uh, 2003 uh, World Championship in Iran. We had after that preparation with the club. I went to the room to check what they are going, what mess they have in the room. And I saw on his night dresser, he had that book that I suggest. And you know, that was 2003. And I said that my mission, that is make me, make me so happy. And it was not volleyball, it's a mission of the life. And when you see how they are successful in the life, and then you see that they can mention some, uh, some, life stories that they learned from me and uh, from the stuff that were around me that is what what makes me uh, the most happier and uh, bringing the happiness on the on the faces of the people around that is the that is the something that i li- really enjoy and you know we will always be familiar and whenever i see you you will always have something that we can uh, uh, that we can share and you, we will always have something that we can stand on that and say, okay, what do you think about this and about this? And you will not say that I will tell you the, the words that you should not talk, that you will be free to say and to, you know, we cannot just talk when in the process of studying, learning, there is no discussion, but uh, the, 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 in the mo- some moments, but democracy is uh, everywhere. Always. Absolutely. In always. In always. Well, Milan, I just want to thank you so much for your time. Again, once again, congratulations on back-to-back titles. Champion. And then, champion, of course, once again. Uh, to, to be honest, uh, you have to congratulate first for the last year because I was not in your uh, broadcasting for the last year. <laughs> okay. All right. Ciao, Milos. Thank you very much. Ayo, ciao. All the best and wish you all the best. Thank you. You can, you can handle the heat. Yeah. You can, you can. Milan Zarkovic, everybody, our ex coach and also our current coach, because once a coach, always a coach. Um, but you said, I remember I talked to Milan a couple times around Bulgaria, but he said, you said he calls you pretty often when you're in. Every couple of weeks, he'll reach out, and sometimes we'll miss each other just because of the 12 hour difference. But mm. besides that, yeah, we always just call, catch up, ask how each other's doing how uh how the uh team uh team is doing just plans in the near future and um gives me his opinion on everything always he always keeps you humble <laughs> he's like perfect balance like super supportive but also you know keeping you in check when you need to um and so need that every once in a while mm. but overall uh i just love talking to him being around him and he just like he always brings such a large energy to the room and a light to the room whenever he's there oh yeah Oh yeah, definitely brighten us up the room, and uh, no matter what situation you put him in, he's always going to be comfortable, make friends, and enemies sometimes, just because they don't understand what he's saying. My favorite interactions with Milan is seeing people who are getting recruited, like our recruits for the first time, come in, and he's just going, he's just, like, just because he just first met you doesn't mean he's going to be any different than what if you'd known you for 50 years. And obviously he has an accent from Serbia, so sometimes it can be hard to, to understand what he's saying, especially if it's your first time talking to him. And uh, the recruits are just so confused. <laughs> and uh, that's my favorite type of interaction with Milan. And just watching that and just kind of laughing. But I just want to give another shout out. Add some 20 for 20% off Dr. Price Electrolytes. Link in the bio here. And just remember, if you can't handle the heat, goddamn kitchen. It's been another episode presented by Addison.